There's honestly very few times when I'm sewing when I genuinely have like no idea what I'm doing, and this might be one of those times. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you saw the Met Gala, or honestly even if you didn't see the Met Gala, you've probably heard everybody obsessing over Billie Eilish's dress. And for some reason, I agreed to recreate that dress. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna recreate one of the Met Gala looks, and I posted the thing on my story, and honestly, this wasn't the one I was planning to recreate. But so many people wanted me to, so I bought 65 yards of fabric, and I guess that's what I'm doing now. I'm actually still gonna be making like the other Met Gala dress too, probably next week, but we're gonna do this one first, because everybody seemed to be really excited about it, and I'm also very excited about it now, so. We're gonna figure it out. <laughs> For my fabrics here today, like I said, I have a total of 65 yards, I think. Um, and I'll go through all of them for you guys. None of this is sponsored, by the way. I'm just showing you guys what I got. So the first one I have here is 15 yards of this chiffon fabric. And I got this in the peach color from Fabric Wholesale Direct. And I honestly thought that this color was going to be a lot lighter. It's a lot more pigmented than I want. So I don't know that I'm actually going to use the full 15 yards because my plan originally was to use a bunch of layers of this, but it's honestly like so bright that I might only use one layer, which would probably only be like five yards, but we'll see. The next one I have here is a nylon taffeta, and I got this one in the extra wide size from Fabric Wholesale Direct because this is going to be like the underskirt, and we need it to be very big. And I got three yards of this in the off-white color. Um, next, what I have here is 40 yards of tulle, and I got this one off of Amazon. You can get like a bundle of 40 yards for like $15, I think it was, so these are a really great deal. Um, this one I got from a local fabric shop, and this is seven yards in a peach color tulle, because this is like the exact color I wanted for this dress. And then this is half a yard of this kind of like mesh fabric. Because if you look closely at Billy's dress, the bodice is actually made out of this kind of fabric. Um, but all I could find was white from a local store. So I'm actually going to be dyeing some of these fabrics in just a minute here. And then the last thing I have here is a white lining fabric. And this is actually just part of a sheet that I cut off because I'm also going to be dyeing this one. And yeah, this is a lot of fabric. This is definitely my new record for the amount of fabric for one dress. And this is definitely going to be a fun challenge. And we've got a lot of dyeing ahead of us, so, I mean, of, the, of the fabric. The, the actual dyeing is going to start tomorrow when I start sewing, but I think we should start on the fabric dyeing. I'm very scared I'm either going to screw up my fabric or the kitchen, but I think I need to do this. Okay, so this is the dye that I'm going to be using, and this is the rich synthetic sandstone color dye, because this is the closest thing that they had. Um, and I'm like, if the color doesn't turn out perfectly, I'll put a layer of chiffon over top of it to kind of help with the color. But it's going to at least get it away from this white. And I'm dyeing the mesh fabric and also the white lining fabric. And then I also have these that I'm going to be dyeing at the same time. The boning that I bought had like this casing around it. So I just took the boning out and I'm going to dye this right now. Hi. And then I also have these hook and eye clasps that I'm also going to try to dye. So... So the instructions say to just heat up some water and keep it almost at boiling, add a little bit of dish soap and my fabric and see what happens. So I guess that's what we're gonna do. There's only like one other time when I really have dyed fabric and that was for the puff dress and I used coffee just to get like rid of the really harsh white tones and it went fairly well, I guess. But dyeing fabric just makes me really nervous. <laughs> Sophie, do you know how to dye fabric? Okay, I think the water is starting to get there, so I'm going to add in a little bit of dish soap now and some of this. Um, it honestly doesn't say how much of this I should be adding. Well, I guess it does, but I didn't measure out my water. So I think I'm just going to follow my heart, add a little bit of dish soap. I'm going to put on some gloves while I open this so I don't destroy my hands. Ooh, that's exciting. Again, I don't really know how much I should add. I have some test pieces and it says to get them wet before putting them in. So I think we're gonna start with this one because this is not a synthetic fabric so it should take dye really fast so I don't know how long to keep it in for. I think I need to add more dye. I think I'm gonna take this one out because it's going to get a lot lighter once it's washed but I don't want it to be super dark so nice. 
Okay, yeah, so this one dies very quickly and I don't want it this dark, so I have to keep it in for even less time. Um, but I think this will be close enough to get the color that I need. Honestly, finding this mesh fabric in here is the hardest part. I mean, something's happening. I think I'm gonna leave that little mesh strand in there because it's going to have to be in there for a lot longer than this cotton fabric will. Honestly, like it's already dyed. Do I just take it out? I kind of just want to take it out. <laughs> Definitely a color. It looks like spaghetti. Ugh, the mesh one just keeps coming out way too yellow. Everything else is done, I just have to figure out how to get these ones right. I think the shorter the amount of time, the less yellow it gets. I think that's it. I haven't even started sewing yet and my room is like already scary to look at um, but we need to cut out all the bodice pieces next and I'm actually going to be using the bodice from my long ruffle gown pattern and I'm just going to be making like some minor edits to it so if you guys wanted to like use that you totally could too if you were for some reason also making this ridiculous dress and after I went through all the trouble to dye this fabric I don't even like how it looks and I also just remembered that from my second puff dress I had some of this fabric left over and it's actually in the exact same color that my chiffon fabric is in because it's from the same company so I'm going to be using this actually for the bodice and I'm going to use my pattern to cut out a bodice out of these fabrics and also my white tulle fabric and basically I am just using the long ruffle pattern as it is except I'm kind of getting rid of the armholes because I want to change up the shape of this a little bit later. I feel like I'm trying to cut a cloud. Okay, I cut out all of the layers and I did a test one and I'm actually really happy with how the colors layer all together. And the first step of this is just going to be basting all the layers to one of the lining pieces. And so the order that we're going to be doing this in is our lining piece, then four layers of the white tulle fabric, then the mesh fabric, and then four layers of the peach tulle fabric. And I'm just going to lay that out as flat as I can and use tons and tons of pins on this step, and then put a basting stitch around the perimeter of all the pieces. And now I'm going to start assembling the bodice, first by working with the top front pieces and sewing those all together. And then I'm going to work with the bottom front pieces and sew those together. And then I'm going to combine these two pieces to make the front piece. And I'm going to do that with all of the layered pieces and also with all of the rest of the lining pieces. Now that both of the front pieces are done, we need to start assembling the back. And I'm going to take our back pieces and sew in the darts that were marked out on the patterns with all of the pieces. And then I'm going to sew the back pieces to the rest of the bodice. But before I do that, I actually just want to cut off this little section here because this is where we continued over the armhole. But because this is going to be strapless, it's just going to go down like this. And then the side that is closer to the dart that we just put in is the side that attaches here. So I'm just going to pin and sew all these pieces together. Okay, we have both of the bodices now pretty much assembled and I'm so happy with how this one's looking. Like all the colors work together somehow to create the perfect color. And now we have to add in all of the boning that was on Billy's dress. And for the boning casing, I'm going to use this one that we dyed here and it's honestly not the perfect color, but I think I'm going to use it anyway because I don't really have anything else. And this isn't the boning that I typically use with you guys. This is a pack I got from Joann's, I think. And so it comes with this casing that you can take out first. And then here is all the boning it comes with. And once you stitch it in, you're going to put the boning back into the casing to give it that structure. So I'm just going to be working with this right now and stitching it all over the top where it looks like Billy's was. And since this is all sewn now, I'm going to take out the basting stitches that go around all the sections that have been stitched. 
So I think I'm gonna start with it around the cups here. So I'm just going to pin it in place. Actually, I kind of hate this. <laughs> Okay, it's actually the next day now, and last night I went to Joann's, and I was going to get some ribbon that actually matches this fabric, um, but they actually didn't have anything that was going to work, so I picked this one up in hopes that it might be okay. But then last minute, I decided to actually just grab some acrylic paint that matches perfectly, and I think the plan is now, I am taking some double fold bias tape and just putting some paint on top of it, and I'm going to use this as our casing instead because it looks so much nicer. So I'm just going to dilute the paint a little bit because I couldn't even find fabric paint. All they had was this acrylic paint. So I'm diluting it a little bit so that it's not so stiff and then just painting on the top layer. But I do have a lot to do of that. And I'm not very happy with how the color turned out on these clasps either. So I think I'm also going to try to paint these. Honestly, that dye just did not want to be my friend. And now I'm going to pull up my reference photos and start stitching all of the boning channels the same way that they are on Billy's dress. All that boning is finally in and honestly, you guys, it's looking like exactly like Billy's dress. And now I can take the boning and we can finally put it into all of the casings. Um, but this one is all curly, so I'm going to have to iron out the straight ones, but I'm going to use some of these curved ones for the curved parts of the bodice. And when you add in your boning, you wanna make sure that you round out the edges so that we don't accidentally put a hole through our fabric because it wouldn't be fun. And I'm not going to put boning in every single one of these channels, so I honestly don't feel like it needs it because the casing is already kind of stiff from the paint. So I'm just going to add it wherever I see fit. I actually did end up putting boning in pretty much all of the casings except for the ones around the bust and I ended up using all the boning that I bought so I also ended up just using some zip ties for some of the less important parts which work pretty much just as well. And we're going to take our bodice lining piece now and honestly I can't believe that this fabric is underneath this one because these look like such different colors now. But I'm going to put these pieces pretty side to pretty side and so all across the top here to make it a finished edge. But before we do that we do need to cut down all of the boning so that it's about half an inch away from the top edge that we don't catch it while we sew these. For all the ones that go all the way down to the bottom, I'm just going to pull them out so that we don't hit them when we sew. And then I'm just going to pin these pieces together pretty side to pretty side. And while I sew across this edge, I think I'm going to just modify it slightly so that it's a little closer to the shape of Billy's dress. So I'm going to make these kind of go more straight across here until we reach the corner over here instead of having this curve here. And then from that point, it's going to kind of curve down and make a little bit of a lower back. And now I'm just going to sew this. And then once I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to trim down these edges, fold them all over, and put a top stitch across the top edge. Honestly, I'm not sure how well my machine is going to be able to handle this because it's so thick, but um, we'll see. All things considered, that went surprisingly well. All right, and the bodice is done for now. I don't think we can do much more on it before we do the skirt. So I think we need to tackle that next. <laughs> it's looking so good though, I'm so proud of this. My main goal when cutting out the skirts was really just to maximize the amount of fabric that I had. So I cut out the front skirt first, and this is the finished measurements, but I actually cut it into three different panels and I'm going to sew them together later. And then from there, I basically just cut out a really long half oval shape and made it as long as I possibly could with my fabric and then cut a little piece out for the waist. And when I unfolded it, it was already very clearly the biggest skirt I have ever made. And I was so excited that, you know, I couldn't help myself. I had to pin it all together and then try it on. Um, and I wasn't getting quite as much poof as I would like, so I tried it on with my petticoat, which definitely helped quite a bit, but I wanted even more poof, so I actually ended up asking my friend to borrow her hoop skirt, but we were already off to a really good start on the skirt. 
So I really want to get kind of an interesting shape on the front because Billy's kind of like poofs out in a unique way. Um, so I think I'm going to take all of the skirt panels that I already cut out and I'm going to take this other boning that's just a stitch on boning so I sew directly on it. And this one also comes all curled up in a little roll. But I think I want to save this shape because I'm going to stitch these onto the front panels of the skirt so we get kind of these three bellows I think in the front. So I'm going to start by stitching them at the top and then I might work some more on the way down. We'll see. But before I do this, I actually think I'm going to serge down either side to help with the fraying um, because I finally have my serger back. I'm so happy. And now I'm going to stitch these down so that the boning is going to be on the back side with the curve poofing out. And I'm going to put these all four inches away from the top. And I guess I'm just going to keep adding boning all down these skirts. And we'll just see what happens. petticoat over a hoop skirt right now but I think the extra boning is really giving it a fun shape here and then it leaves the drama in the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch all the front panels together into one piece now. Alright so I brought my mannequin out finally. It's been in storage for a while now so I'm really excited and I put the skirt on it and it looks really really pretty um, and now we have to figure out how I'm going to do all the layering to get it to be the same color as the bodice. So because the underlayer skirt was an extra wide fabric, I had to use two layers of the rest of my fabrics to make it the same size as the skirt and then stitch it down the back. And so I laid out all of my fabric pieces at least two layers at a time and then traced around the lining skirt. And the best technique I found out with all the tool, which I was honestly dreading at first, was measuring out the length and then using bowls as fabric weights to like lay it down so I could get everything all nice and even, and then working like that. And the more layers of tool that you work with at a time, the darker it gets. So sometimes it is easier to cut, you know, four or six layers at a time. And yeah, it was basically a lot of tool cutting for like two days straight. And quite honestly, while I was making this dress, my living room was like not usable for like an entire week. But luckily my parents were really good sports about it. <laughs> fabric. I am not happy with how the color is looking on the skirt yet. So we're doing another layer of tulle or so. I got this yellow one to put underneath all of the pink layers because I had the kind of yellow layer of the mesh on the bodice and I think that's what kind of gave it more of like the neutral peach tone. So I'm hoping this will kind of do the same on the skirt. And then I got more of this one to do two more layers of this on the skirt. So I got 15 yards of this and 8 yards of this. And then we were back at it again. <laughs> I'm liking the color on the dress a lot more with these added layers and now all of the skirt pieces have been cut out and we need to sew them all together. So this is going to take a minute. And the pieces that I'm going to work with first are all of the back pieces because the lining skirt was made with an extra wide fabric so it didn't have a seam in the back. But all these ones need to be sewn together down the back to make it just as wide. But before we reach the waist, I'm going to stop about 9 inches away from the waist so we have room to get this dress on and off. And then once all of those are sewn, I am going to sew all the back pieces to the front pieces down the side seams. And then on the back lining piece, I'm also going to fold the back in half and then cut a 9 inch slit down the center to make it the same as the other pieces. And then around the chiffon layer and the lining layer, I'm going to add a hem around these slits so these pieces don't unravel. Oh my gosh, that took forever. <laughs> well, now I have to sew all these pieces together somehow. So the plan is I'm going to be sewing together all of these layers. And the order I'm going to be doing this in is I'm going to do the chiffon layer then the yellow layer, then the four white layers, and then the three pink layers, and I'm going to pin those all together around the waist seam, and then put two parallel basting stitches across that. There's so much fabric here. <laughs> Alright, well that was absolutely insane, and now I need to take these skirts and base them to the lining skirt, and we are going to match up their side seams and back seams first, and then pull on the basting stitches to gather the tool layer up a little bit around it. Working with tool is honestly like so fun, but also such a nightmare at the same time. Okay, and now I'm going to put a basting stitch across the waistband here to hold all these layers together. This is so heavy. 
ran out of bobbin. I stitched the whole thing and then I ran out of bobbin. So, round two. Now I think I'm going to turn from the skirts and finish up the bodice really quickly um, because we still haven't finished up the back and I'm going to use the hook and eye closures for this part. So I marked out on the bodice to a point where it fits comfortably on me and then I think I'm going to cut off all the excess that I have so I can add in the hook and eye. And I'm going to add in the side with the hooks to the right side and I'm going to just fold this over and put this on top of the bodice. And then on the left, I'm going to add the eyes. And this one, I'm going to fold over and stitch it on top. So we keep the extra flap here for like privacy when we wear it. And now I'm going to pull out all of the boning that hits the bottom and trim it so that it's about half an inch shorter and round out those edges so we don't hit it when we sew across the waistline. And then I'm going to pin our gigantic skirt to the bodice and stitch those together. And I'm also going to add a zigzag stitch around the waist. And I tried on the dress and gathered up some tulle around the shoulders like Billy had, and I'm just going to stitch that in place. And now I'm just going to top stitch a bunch of layers of scrap tulle all across the bodice. And now all that is left to do on this dress is to add a hem all the way around the bottom edges of the chiffon and lining fabrics. Somehow. And now it's finally time for the big reveal of this dress. This was without a doubt the most complicated and biggest dress I have ever made, but I'm honestly really, really proud of this one. I haven't made anything like this technically challenging before, and it honestly went like smoother than I was even expecting to because honestly, I was a little hesitant to make it at first because I wasn't sure what was going on, but I think it turned out really good. And I think it's actually really, really close to Billy's actual dress. And also a big shout out to Aston who was constantly fixing my dress like every 10 seconds because this dress is so massive. Honestly, I like don't know what I'm going to do with it after because this dress is so big, but it was definitely worth it. I had so much fun on this project and I really hope you guys like this video. Um, and next week I am going to be making my next Met Gala look, which is going to be Grimes' look and I'm really excited about it. So get pumped and stay tuned and I'll see you guys next week.